Hello guys, welcome to another video. So in my previous video I mentioned that I have been planning to get a hardware 3 car to do the same test route for my autopilot testing. However, each and every time I make that appointment, uh, Tesla cancels it again because they sold the demo car. So that's good for Tesla that they're selling that many cars, but it's not good for me to get uh, to try the hardware tree. Um, now, luckily, one of the followers that lives close by reached out to me and said, well, you can borrow my car to do it. So right now I'm on my way to this guy and I'm going to use his car to do the same test route and see if there's any difference between hardware 3 or hardware 2.0 i'm not sure what to expect um, on the one hand i have high expectations uh, regarding hardware 3 and the speed at which it interprets the data or can calculate the data on the other hand we still have the european regulations that nerf autopilot quite a bit the part i'm mostly interested in is the s-curve and uh, how much lag there is on the display when uh, displaying the oncoming traffic on my car that's more or less one second to one and a half seconds of delay and uh, i'm hoping that will be a lot less in the hardware tree car so let's see Right, we're on the highway, so let's test with this bus for the auto lane change. So I'm going, oh, the bus is coming as well. So let's take the truck a little up ahead. So the truck is in the rightmost lane. I'm in the leftmost lane. So let's see what it does. Starts to move, starts to move. Yep. And it kind of cancels the movement a little bit and then goes into the second lane eventually but it displays the truck in the center lane while it's not even there so that's the same as with autopilot 2.0 so another thing i want to test is whether the car goes to the left side of the lane as much as mine does when passing a truck it is I can't really say if it is moving over, yes or no. It feels a little bit like it's doing it, but I don't really see it on the dash. Yeah, it is moving over a little bit, but not as much as on my car. So that's definitely better on this one. So here we have an exit. Let's see how the automatic exit taking is going. Yeah, that's rather smooth. It's a little bit smoother than on my car, but I also feel that... Oh, that was braking a little bit late. Um, I also feel that it goes to the right lane and then it finds the center again. So it is a little bit shifting left and right. I think that should be more smooth uh, in the end. Up ahead we have that lane shift. Kind of curious what the car will do there traffic lights red so let me see if I can slow down a little bit that should be okay ish if the cars in front of me go fast enough okay so let's enable autopilot and see what it does here in my car it went too close to the curb oh this is a lot better this is a lot more trustworthy and the car starts steering into the turn a lot faster than my car does. I like. Right, so here we have the disappearing lane lines. Let's see what the car does here. First attempt, it was going to almost hit that car. This is better, but still really close for comfort. How quickly does it go to the right? Almost immediately. So yeah, that's good. Let me slow down a bit for the intersection here. Let's see what it does on the turn. Oh, it takes the center of the road, 
but yeah it's doing okay let's see what it does all the way at the end um, if I go like maybe 25 maybe it will handle it let's see so you're again coming up on an intersection it maneuvers in between that's nice so I'm going 25 let me see if it takes this lane shift even at lower speeds it was not really able to do that in my car no it was not going to do that and it was going to damage the rims probably and since it's not my car I was not going to risk that Okay, I'm not expecting any difference here, but let's see if the car slows down quicker, yes or no, for the 50 kph zone. It started slowing down a little bit before it. I don't know if it was because of the parked cars, yes or no. And now it stops, and that guy thinks, hey, you let him pass. Think, what the hell? <laughs> okay, that was uh, interesting. Anyway, so it doesn't really go down all the way to 50 when uh, or before the, uh, re the speed restriction. So yeah, unfortunately, if there was like a 50 zone here where that cop is now taking down the pictures for the uh, speed camera, um, I would get a ticket. And since it's GPS based, Tesla should be able to just start slowing down beforehand. Here we have the Hillcrest, where I'm interested in the downward section where the lane lines disappear. So with my car yesterday or the day before, it actually did pretty well. Let's see here. Does it stay on the right side? Uh, goes a little bit searching for the center of the lane. Um, so it's kind of like my car, I don't really see a big difference here. Alright, we're coming up on the S-curve. Now we still have the full European regulation regarding the steering angle. So the big question is, will this car brake up front as to reduce the speed through the turn? Yes or no, otherwise it will behave exactly as my car does, I guess. But here we go, no car, that's good, yep, oh and it's a boarding, oh wow, okay, my car is not a boarding, it's asking me to uh, actually hold the steering wheel, uh, but it is not a boarding autopilot, so hardware 3 is more strict on this, I guess if it sees a real big issue, it just says, well I'm, I'm done with it, I don't know. Um, okay, interesting. So let's see if we get the same phantom blinking, I will call it. So doing the lane change. Early enough. Okay. Yep. Nope. Okay. And the car starts blinking to follow her out. So not to get past this truck because the truck is moving slower it is just saying that to oh auto lane change cancelled hang on okay um, that was weird that it cancelled also maybe because of that five second rule I don't know but it was not giving the message to pass the truck because it was um, too slow it said to follow route so that was kind of weird Okay, let's see what it does for taking the exit here. Okay, taking the exit. And it's working fine, taking the first one. So there's no difference in this case with Autopilot 2.0. Okay, so time for another conclusion. What do I think about hardware 3.0? 
it is different but it's not as different as I was expecting it to be um, now I know that mainly this is going to be the case uh, because of the European regulations uh, and autopilot is quite a bit restricted or limited because of those regulations so that's one thing that is playing uh, in this particular test but also like for example on the S-curve where my car um, goes over the center lane marker but then keeps it in check on autopilot uh, here with hardware 3 autopilot just decided to quit and it wouldn't get it in check and just said like hey I don't know what to do anymore so you have to take over that was a big difference and the guy that was lending me the car he told me that each and every time on in that situation autopilot was disabling um, the same for the automatic exit taking um, where it was doing it fine uh, we had to do a couple of tries because in other uh, tries autopilot uh, was also disabling for some really strange reason and there he also said well autopilot is exhibiting strange behavior on exits and it's not always consistent he never had that uh, disablement on that specific case but when we were doing it we got a uh, autopilot disabling uh, message and the second time we did the run it was going just fine so also there there are some inconsistencies but other than that I think with hardware 3 um, autopilot feels a bit more smooth um, and and that's something that I do like uh, but on the other hand it's not that much of a difference compared to autopilot 2.0 of course you can see the traffic cones and it will take the traffic cones into account I didn't get a chance to really test that specific scenario um, today but uh, that is indeed a feature difference you do get with MCU2 uh, also some differences in YouTube and Netflix and all the games that you get but in terms of uh, autopilot the only slight difference that I saw was in the lack of displaying the cars of oncoming traffic um, I noticed there was still a lag it seems that it's a little bit less of a lag but still the car is uh, past you already and then only then it will display it still in front of you uh, so yeah that's 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 not good it might be that it's a slow canvas communication between the different systems uh, it might just be that um, Tesla does not prioritize the display of these things uh, it's it's I don't know uh, but I did test on a Model S P100D a Raven edition so to minimize the different variables and uh, it turns out that the difference in autopilot at this point in time I think that is really important that I, that I stress that so at this point in time autopilot 3.0 is not that much different from 2.0 so there you have it this might change of course in the future when Tesla is really opening up the tabs on the uh, autopilot because up until now uh, autopilot was developed for 2.5 hardware and then it was apparently emulated on the 3.0 hardware so there was no real difference or a real advantage of the actual neural processing units um, but yeah so that is all about the change um, Elon has uh, told in an interview recently that the base code has been rewritten for the new uh, FSD computer so I'm curious to see if the coming updates are going to differentiate hardware 3 from hardware 2 so as always if you like my videos give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click that subscribe button down there and uh, make sure you hit that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos and for now thanks for watching see you guys next time bye bye